What's up, everybody? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is Podcast Gameverse, episode 059 for Saturday, February 6, 2021. Uh, it's a special day. Not really. I'm joined by uh, Rick. What's up? Yo, what up? What up, everybody? I'm excited uh, I, to see some good shit. I'm I started with that. That's the uh, that's the elevator music from Mass Effect. <laughs> uh, a lot of Mass Effect news came out. Yes, a lot of Mass Effect news. So there's gonna be yeah. Mass Effect. Uh, it's gonna be Mass Effect heavy in the front end here. Or I guess in the middle end, but um, yeah, yeah, we got quite a bit to go over. Um, you're not, you've never played the Mass Effect games, right? No, I played all of them. I just played, played my my shit was fucked because uh, I played I played the first one. I, I I didn't care about it as much as I wanted to because I played the first one on PC. Played the second one on PS3, and then I played the third one on Xbox. So, like, my my shit was all fucked up. It was not. It was not my shepherd. Let's just say that. <laughs> uh, it's a bummer. Well, they had a way to like carry that stuff over, didn't they? I thought they it had, did, like, but like, thing. it's not like I remembered anything I'd done in those games. It was just more like, hey, you. Uh, where were you born? Uh, I'm from the streets, bitch. Like, I don't know. Like, it was like more, it was like more <laughs> of a, just like, I'm just going to play this and not really care about it. Um, gotcha. Well, if that's the case. Leo Gitt says nothing you did mattered anyway. Yeah, but it, uh, it, it wasn't the point though. The point was that like, I, I wanted to care about it more than I ended up caring about it. And in our defense, like we didn't know none of the choices mattered until the third game came out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was a good, like, six years there where you're like, oh, this is going to build something awesome. <laughs> yeah. So. Ah, oh, Christ. Um, now, I'm a huge Mass Effect fan, so, like, I guess I could take uh, some of the some of the brunt of this. I beat the trilogy at least, like, once a year. For the last, like, four or five years, I've beaten the trilogy at least once a year, so I'm, I'm probably going to play it again, actually, in excitement. The uh, legendary edition. Um, but yeah, we have quite a bit to go over Mass Effect wise. I'm excited to go into it. Uh, before we do, man, what have you been playing? Other than uh, you've been playing Persona, actually, right? I know you're just playing that on stream right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I couldn't catch the stream because I was, you know, predisposed. <laughs> but what were you doing? Like, well, where, where'd you get to? So uh, that game is like. The beginning of it is like a, it's like an eight hour tutorial. So yeah, it's fucking long. Like I tried to get my dad into it and he was like, nah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's about where I am. <laughs> like, I think they just started allowing me to explore the, um, uh, the, the palace. Yeah. So like, I've got, I've got the full roster now. I'm, I'm, I'm killing personas and and recruiting them to the team and all that stuff the the one thing no one talks about there, there's the one thing that no one talks about is um the the talk system where like when you knock down some uh some of the enemies you can you can like talk to them and and recruit them yeah uh like i thought that was cool like real like um like undertale style <laughs> where you gotta like navigate the conversation and like tell them things that they want to hear, and then they'll they'll join you. It's uh, funny you brought that up because that wasn't in the earlier Persona. That yeah, was yeah, actually, that's, yeah, that was that's a, a completely Megami Tensai thing. And that's a completely in. new thing. They, they they haven't done that in the in the other one. So it, it's really cool because it depends on like the monster's personality. So it's not always like that same monster respond the same way, at least in the SMT games. Like I think Persona kind of simplified it. Yeah. But in SMT, it was like a lot more complicated. Like the request got more crazy. Like I was playing SMT four and this one demon was like, yo, real talk. Let me eat one of your guys and I'll join your team. 
<laughs> he was straight up like, let me eat one of your guys and I'll join your team. And I was like, dude, fuck you. And he was like, oh, you protect your people? I was like, I dig that. You know what? I'll join you anyway. I fucks with that. <laughs> like, it, it's really weird. Like, it really caught me off guard, some of the shit that SMT got in, that SMT does. Yeah. So if you like that, like, you know, maybe go pick up, uh, I think SMT3 is getting uh, a remaster that's supposed to drop in the States this year. So check that out if you like that uh, negotiation aspect. Yeah. Uh, it's not that I like it or dislike it. I just thought, like, no one was fucking <laughs> talking about it. Like, I'm like, oh, this game does this this is like no one's talking about this but that's like the most new thing that i've run into so far even like the story hold on let me get um got someone who wants to jump in toy for hers um friend of the stream here Let's see if we can get him in but um yeah it's a thing that like no one no one talks about it so i'm like what the fuck um like this is new and unique um like that's the kind of stuff i wanted to see because even the story seems pretty um close to like the core of the story seems pretty close to what persona 4 was doing and that it's more like you're like your true self and like oh don't hide your true self or it'll come out uh uh and be like an enemy to you and shit like that and it seems like i thought it was better in four but five is more like rebellion is a theme for five yeah. It's less about like being true to yourself and like doing what's right, even though it's hard. It and, wasn't like, so much taking... like doing what's right. It was more of just like, hey, don't. This is who you are. Don't lie to yourself, or it's gonna, it's gonna do you more harm than good. You know, you'll we... see what I mean when you get deeper into it. Like, it's most of the aspects are like, this guy's an asshole. <laughs> like that. That's yeah. basically what it boils down to. Um. And, like, I, I love Persona, but, like, a lot of the villains, like, get really cartoony later and, like, almost unrealistic. Like, there are some that are, like, really, really good. Like, Kamashita, the first one, he's, like, like, he's, like, a realistic piece of shit. But then there are some that are, like, really cartoony and, like, feel very, like, anime and kind of unrealistic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you'll, you'll see. You'll see when you play it. But, like, there's a lot of villains. Like, all they need is, like, a mustache twirl. <laughs> yeah. So still, yeah, still I'm game, like, though. I'm like, I don't know, six, seven hours in and I'm, I, I'm like at the tail end of what seems like just the long, longest fucking tutorial I've ever, like, I don't even think Persona 4 was that long. Like they let you get into it pretty early on. Um, so yeah, Persona yeah. 5, this is something I, 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 I've criticized about Japanese RPGs. Because I noticed this Japanese RPG is like they take a long time to fucking get going. Like Persona Five does it, Persona Four, all the fucking Tales of games take forever to get to the point. Not uh, I don't like I, not like this though. Not like this. Yeah. <laughs> like this one, I feel like is the worst out of out of all of them. Um, not that it's bad. I, I I like the characters and the character development, but. You know, I I know what I want out of a Persona game, so I'm like, just let yeah. me fucking explore and just kill shit. I and... hear you. It's not that bad for like newcomers if you had never played it before. Yeah, it's not so bad because like you're kind of there, you're along for the ride, you're enjoying the story. But if you've like beaten the game already, you've played other Persona games, you're just like get to the fucking point already. <laughs> yeah. It's a good um... game though. I fucking love Persona, so I'm glad yeah. you're playing it. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. So, um, I realized that I did not get it while it was cheap. So I did spend sixty bucks on this, but it's fine. It's a um, <laughs> great, great game. So it's a good game, but damn, you spent sixty bucks on it. Sixty bucks for this game is it like, like thirty right now for a physical copy? Um, I don't know. I would rather buy a full price digital game than. Then a forty dollar physical game with a steel book because the steel book's yeah. like forty bucks right now. I bet. Yeah, you're fucking ridiculous. But okay, dude, it's that <laughs> like, st dude, if I had a, okay, if I had a physical version of every game that I own digitally, um, I would need like twelve more closets. <laughs> I mean, like if we're just counting Steam alone, I've got like thousand over a thousand games on Steam. Uh, like I just don't like I don't like having just stuff lying around so uh, whatever 
High skills, whatever's cheap, but uh, you do you, man. Even if it's wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, Persona Five. I've been streaming that, so that's archived up on the YouTube. So GameReverse dot com slash YouTube, and um, you can watch. Um, the dialogue is really good in this game. Like, there's a lot, a lot of good, like, dumb choices you can make. Um, Morgana is funny because he like simp's so hard for um. For on, um, yeah. What's her name? Ta- Ta- Takamaki. Yeah, on Takamaki. Also, like everyone say says each everyone's name incorrectly. I feel like, <laughs> um, like like um, like um, like it's supposed to be Sakamoto, but they say Sakomoto, and I'm like, that's not how you pronounce that <laughs> really i thought they pronounced it right it's been a while since i played through it though uh, yeah they everyone says each uh, other's names incorrectly hi hi toys here what's up man oh you can hear me that's great i mean i've, I've been playing with a mic for some time i had to rego the computer and stuff like that it's great i mean how is it working it because sounds that, fine it, it's uh, like a three dollar mic no, so, it doesn't sound. <laughs> it sounds like you're like you're shouting from another room. Oh, okay. I was trying to be the right <laughs> mic. Let, let me try to fix that. <laughs> uh, Leo Getz says you sound like a trapped miner. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that was, I, I, what he said when, when when you said that. I was like, what do you mean? Oh, with an ER. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now it makes sense. <laughs> um, no, yeah, if um, you if you have a better mic, I would say uh, please use that. But <laughs> yeah, hold on, I'll try something else. Um, but yeah, like the dialogue's really funny because um, every time it's um. I, I forget what the fuck her name, Panther, whatever Panther's name is. Whenever it's like her turn in battle, Morgana's like, "Oh my god, she's so fucking beautiful," and I'm like, "Dude, like, <laughs> like show the fuck out, yeah, yeah." Really funny. She would never fuck you. It's it's really funny, and it gets worse like later. <laughs> uh, but it's like a yeah, I, thing. I I I like it so. It's a good game, man. I'm glad you're playing it. The game's like game's fucking dope. Yeah. You pick, a, you pick a waifu yet? No. Well, she's the only she's the only one I've run into so far. Oh, you don't. I would have thought you would have like seen the other characters, like. Well, I saw the one, the younger one, uh, the one with the ribbon or whatever. But she hasn't done anything yet. Oh, I would have thought you would have like. Well, I, I don't mean like in the game. I mean like just through like people like sharing stuff on Twitter. I would have thought like you would have like picked a wife who already. Oh no, I've, I don't. I haven't seen anything in this game. So. Oh wow, that's that's impressive, man. That's great. <laughs> wow. Well, it's not like I'm like it's looking for. <laughs> you know, it's not like it's in my channels or whatever. Like. That's fair. And I love Persona Five, dude. I've been trying to. I fucking love it. I'm so excited that you're playing it because I have someone else to talk to about it. <laughs> yeah. That's dope. You know um, what else is a good game to talk about? Don't. Don't you start. <laughs> don't you start. Uh, I was going to play Outer Wilds today, but then I had a root canal, and that root canal got fucked beyond all recognition. Yeah. So I needed to, like... I just got home, like, I woke up this morning at, like, 8 o'clock so I can get there in time. I got there early. I, like, not, I got there, like, 8.45, so I have time to, like, check in, get ready for my appointment. And I didn't get home till like, 1.30. <laughs> Shit. The whole thing was a fucking mess. Granted, most of it was, like, picking up prescriptions and stuff, because traffic is fucking awful right now. I got out of the uh, dentist's office at, like, 12.00. So that was still like three hours, over three hours I was there in the dentist office. And then I had to go pick up some prescriptions and some other shit. And I didn't get home until like, awful. Um, but I have been trying to keep up with some games. I was I've been playing uh I've been playing uh, a lot <coughs> excuse me, I'm playing a lot of Grim Dawn. But that's still 
a lot yeah. of fun. I'm saving I'm saving the uh the modded character for when we play when we stream, but I'm playing a vanilla character right now and it's it's still a good game, dude. Even if vanilla grimmed on so much slower, I don't level up as fast. It's still just a fucking phenomenal game. So much customization, so much depth to it. It's all the shit you can do. Like even while we were playing, we were like talking about our builds and like how they like can support each other. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's such a great game. Like it's almost yeah. overwhelming how much shit there is to do in it in terms of how to develop your character and what you want them to play. Yeah, I don't really get like overwhelmed like that. I I like having just a, a shitload of options because um, I don't know. I'll never get bored of seeing this. I get bored easily, so um, if I'm not running into the same con uh, content over and over and seeing the same like enemies and seeing the same weapons or like getting comfortable in in my shit. Like as long as things keep keep getting mixed up, I'm like, yeah, this is this is badass. So I, I get worried that like I'm not playing right. <laughs> I guess like, I get worried that I'm like not playing prof- uh, like efficiently. See, you like and, being like, efficient. I don't like when I play games like this. I usually just get like high as fuck. It's the same thing where it's like like um in PSO two like. Um, or like in any MMO, there are like other players who who will get pissed the fuck off when you're not carrying the weight of the party. And for me, I'm like, dude, I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna I'm gonna play and have fun, and that's all I fucking care about. Um, <laughs> like, so as long as I'm having fun, I don't care if it's not effective. Um, as long as it like, as long as I'm having fun, that's why. Like, I immediately go. Like that's what's I don't, fun to me though. Like I, I have fun knowing like yeah, my my build when my build runs like a well, well like a well oiled machine, like that's fun to me. When I'm like yes, this is like I built the perfect character, or I built yeah. the character to do a, a perfect job or something like that. That's like that uh, is fun to me. I'm the kind of guy who breeds Pokemon, like and I get into IVs and EVs. Like that's gives you an idea of like what's fun to me. Oh, you're one of those guys. Okay. I am one of those guys. I am one of those. <laughs> but yeah. I, that's what's great about the game, though. Like, it's not like super hard. I, and it appeals to both those play styles. Like, if you just want to like fuck around and like experiment with a bunch of shit, you can do it. If you want to like build your character to do one thing perfectly well, you can do that too. Like, it's it's a lot of fun, this game, dude. It's so good. Even like even when I'm I'm playing a a totally different character, I'm still having like a blast. Like I almost want to start over with another character and run like three concurrent characters because like each each class plays so differently and every class has multiple ways to play it within that class itself. Uh it's so good. Yeah. I love this game. Yeah, I've got I've got three characters. Um and they're like they're each of them is completely different from the other, so yeah, it's 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 I, I really like it. Um, it's a blast, dude. It's a good game. Again, anyone, if you haven't pl- picked it up yet, go go check it out. It's a fantastic game. And best part is we have a uh, looking for group channel on our discord. Uh, we uploaded the mods there. So if you want to download them, play with us, see what the big deal is. You can do that. Yeah. Have some fun. <laughs> yeah. Gamerverse.com slash discord. Get in there. Mm -hmm. um put the link in the chat there um yeah grim dawn it's um yeah i guess it's like exploding right now because it was available in the humble bundle i might actually have a code for that so i guess if anyone wants that hit me up and i'll get you a code um but yeah that game that game's a lot of fun just i i like to turn my brain the only thing i fucking hate about this game and like i went on reddit and i was like hey guys anyone else hate this fucking map how fucking shitty is this map and then i just got like people were like no dude this is one of the greatest maps ever what are you talking about and i'm like there's no like it's it's i i I hate it when like i'm I'm exploring an area because their their defense is like it's about exploration you wouldn't be able to explore if everything was on the map but then i'm like well no if i've already explored an entire area Cause there's like a fog of war, you know, how like in Starcraft, 
like all yeah. the map is dark until you you know you explore it um yeah. this game does that so like if i've cu- uncovered the entire map put all the fucking shit on the map don't like it, it it's it's incredible to me how much they do not put on the map um and then and the shit they do put on the map it's only shown when you're in a certain radius of the thing they want you to show you. So I'm like, dude, this is one of the worst maps ever. Um, and there's no way to fix it. Th- thankfully, I found a website that like has like a, a web-based map with all the landmarks on it, and it's fucking amazing. But it should be in the fucking game, though. I agree. Um, like, the, It's not so bad if you're trying to get like... Here's the thing. I get people like that in some games. You know, games that don't... Games that don't hold your hand, we're gonna have that argument. Yeah, you know, let you go your own way. Games that aren't scared to let you get lost. But I like that in really big, expansive games like Breath of the Wild or Elder Scrolls. Not a top-down, two-dimensional action, like isometric action RPG. Like yeah. that's that's frustrating as Plus, fuck. When you're in lost those in game games, in those games, you can. You can place your own markers on the map. Yes, you can't place um, a marker in Grim Dawn, which is ridiculous. It's it's. Or yeah, if you can, fun. I don't know how to do it. I'm sure there's someone like watching who's like fuming. No, you can't. You can't because I I you tried. Double, you you double check. Okay. I quite. I looked and I was like, I couldn't find it, so I was like, oh, I guess you can't. I never like verified it. Um. Yeah, that's like my biggest. That's my biggest pet peeve against like. A game like this and granted yeah it's it's cool like when i put that reddit post where people like well you know if you um if you look at the um, if you look at the quest details they they give extremely detailed directions in the quest dialogue and i'm like okay <laughs> cool right but wh- i don't want to have to pull up a, another fucking menu and then read all this text and, to find out where i'm going because i might not want to do that immediately you know yeah. i might want to take like 20 quests and then just do them as I walk past them, uh, you know, and not have to think about it. But like, you can't do that it's here. Super you have easy to like, get sidetracked. You can be like walking up to where you think a quest is, and then like, oh, here's a random cave. Here's like a totem. Here's, yeah, here's a, 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 here's, a, here's, a here's, yeah. here's a random cave. Here's a random cave that doesn't even have a marker on the map. So I'm like, okay, if I don't go in this now, I'm gonna lose it. So yeah, <laughs> like. Um, okay. Anyway, yeah. So anyway, that's that's Grim Dawn. Great game. <laughs> it is a great game, I swear. <laughs> great game. Just the map sucks, okay? It's it's like the map sucks. And and it has controller support and it's not great, but it at least has controller support. So um, you know, unlike Path of I can't Exile, imagine. I was gonna say I can't imagine playing this game with a controller it must be a fucking nightmare. It's not bad. It's not bad. The only issue is like when there's a lot of stuff on the ground, you've like flipped through the stuff you want to pick up with the um with the D pad, like up and down. And sometimes it doesn't fucking like select like there'll be like three things on the ground and you'll be flipping through them and it'll only flip through the first two. It's like, well what oh, the the third one's right fucking there. Why are you not like Um <laughs> It does that a lot. That's really the biggest issue with with controller support other than that it's fine like i know it's not the most optimal way to play but it's like it's it at least has it unlike path of exile which i fucking wish it had um path of exile is good too i might i might hop back into that yeah i don't know we'll see i'm playing so much shit right now path of exile oh the medium just came out too i haven't tried that yet oh god there's so many games i can't up dude um but yeah, that's what I've been playing. That's what you've been playing. That was the that was a grim dawn hour. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Sorry, um, everybody. I don't listen, know if Toyf but... if Toyf fixes mic yet, but um, don't know about that. Uh, Leo Getz says medium looks fantastic. You would be uh, surprised at um, I'm I'm excited for it, but then like those reviews came out. And boys getting very middling reviews. Um, yeah, all the reviews are like average at best, which is a uh, bummer because like it, I still want to try. I mean, it's on Game Pass, man. Like the only thing I can really yeah. lose is my time. Yeah. Um, they're saying the performance is like very fucking bad. Like it performs like uh, trash. That's. Uh, but um, I I, I want to check it out myself. Um. 
I just I want to get fucking I want to upgrade my graphics card real quick and then get on that. But times is hard right now, man. But yeah, <laughs> um, I did play. I did play. Uh, OK, so check it out. So I've been playing. Um, if you if you know me, you know that I fucking love this game called DJ Max Respect. It's a rhythm. <laughs> it's a Korean rhythm game. You're still playing um, that. It's like been like a what, like a, almost half a year later. You're still playing that, dude. I've been playing that game for ten years. <laughs> like that series is, is over a decade old. Respect is a is a compilation of the entire franchise. So like it goes back a decade and says, okay, that was our first game. We're taking like that. that. Oh, your is that to- your mic is fucked, man. <laughs> Talking to me. Um, no, that's Toy. Uh, okay, I was like, where the hell is that coming from? It yeah, scared me. Um, I'm scared. But no, no respect. Um, respect is a compilation game, so it goes back a decade and takes every single game they've made, takes all the music from those games, and just puts them in one fucking complete package, um, and just makes everything HD, high res, and just online support everything, the whole nine. Um, so they recently, they recently added a battle pass, um, and, uh, the battle pass is, uh, you know, the thing they do with the battle pass is they have the free tier that gets you like, you know, gets you some shit, but if you want every fucking thing, you got to get the premium pass Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, it's i i'm not gonna give this game um i'm not gonna overlook this game just because it happens to be one of my favorite games of all time um it's a fucking very scumbag thing to do to have a full price game and dj this game is not like cheap either it's like it's it's forty dollars yeah it's not a cheap game it's forty dollars for the base game but then there's like hundreds of dollars of dlc if you want like all the songs and on top of that, it has a battle pass where it's like, I think the battle pad, the premium pass is like 20 bucks and it's just for that season. And the season is only 90 days. So every 90 days, they're going to have a different battle pass that they want you to max level, which is only 30 levels. And it actually doesn't take that long to max it out. But um, still, it's every season you have to pay 20 bucks to get the premium pass. It's fucked up, man. Like, I hate, <laughs> I hate a premium attached to an, a game that's already a premium um i just I, w- I will never give that a pass for anyone that does it so um good this man i appreciate your integrity yeah yeah so this game's doing it um i just thought people should know um yeah so that's it yeah this game i'm looking at the page there's so much dlc like holy shit <laughs> there's so much music yeah it's mostly like there's a lot of soundtrack there's like five soundtracks because each game has a different soundtrack so like like you don't need all of it there's one that like unlocks all the music which you don't need because you can just do that you can leave the game on idle and unlock all the songs so um (laughs) there's different like skins but there's a lot of um additional music DLCs that those are the ones you want but yeah um best rhythm game ever in my opinion so um, it's still a phenomenal game. It's just they really fucked up with that battle pass. I think if you look at the reviews, there's one review where the guy's like, "I can't believe I'm saying this. I love this game a lot," but he starts like bitching about like the battle pass, and he it, it's a not recommended from him. Even though he has like thirty hours. Yeah, it's oh, only thirty hours. Wow, um, thirty one hours, thirty one point four hours. Yeah, it 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 um it sucks, man. I just wish um they didn't go that route. But, yeah, that's um, a bummer. I mean, I'll I'll pick it up eventually. I like me a good rhythm game. You you love it. You don't shop about it, so <laughs> maybe there's something worth the. Well, I've I've not shot up about this game in like ten years. the The thing is, it's it's um, you know, this is like the first. This is the first time it's like officially out of. Asia like it's out of Korea officially now like this is the most widespread it's been like it came out on PS4 like two or three years ago 
Um, and now it's out on Steam, and like this is the first time it's like widely available to people yeah. outside of Korea. So it's um like that's exci- really it's quick. exciting for that. Uh, Leo was asking if the stream was uh choppy. Why am I noticing a chop? And uh, Toyf says he's not having it up with the mic. Sorry, Toyf. Yeah, maybe maybe next time. Maybe next time. Yeah, man, for sure. You can still let us know stuff in the chat, though. I mean, if you guys want to hit us up in the chat. Yeah, talk to us in the chat. We do this live, guys. Live. So, Gameverse.com slash Twitch. Also on YouTube, Gameverse.com slash YouTube. Um, Yeah, you can talk with us. Well, I want to pick up DJ Max Respect. I will once it's... uh, I'm cheap, dude. I'm going to pick it up when it's on sale. Yeah, I will say, I mean, even 50, 50 bucks, it's... um it's it's totally worth it it's been down to like 30 so you can you can definitely and that was like the complete edition was like down to like 30 bucks so whenever they have a sale it usually goes down pretty good but it's again it's the best fucking rhythm game ever dude all the music is original all it has music videos for every song in the game um and it's just a labor of love over a decade old man you can't it's just unmatched in terms of quality so I will pick it up one day, one day. Um, in the meantime, though, we have uh, some news about the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Uh, yeah. If you don't know, uh, the remaster of Mass Effect, the entire trilogy, uh, finally got a release date first off, dropping on May 14th. Uh, we got quite a bit of information. Uh, there's some gameplay changes going on with the game, uh, which I was reading about. I'm really excited for. Uh, basically, they kind of unified how all three games played. So if you guys like played through Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3, you know there's an obvious difference how those game play, games played. Uh, they unified the UI, so it matches a bit between every game. Uh, they improved the aim assist. They have a dedicated melee button like the, like the second and third game have. Uh, weapon balances were completely tuned across all three games. Uh, more so in 1, uh, now you are not limited to only being able to use guns uh, that you are trained in or specialized in. Because uh, it used to be you can use those guns, but there was a ridiculous aiming penalty that made the guns pretty much like useless. Yeah. If you didn't have stats dropped into them, uh, now you can pretty much use all of them competently, but you can only get the uh, bonuses for like damage and special abilities if you have uh, that skill, the proper skill tree for it. Um. Uh, they said so they improve the animations and the cover system, so it's gonna be more in, in, in effect with how you handled it in Mass Effect 2 and 3. Um, honestly, most of these changes, unless specified otherwise, were, uh, were specifically for 1. Because one's kind of the odd one out when it comes to 2 and 3. It was definitely more RPG. Um, it was more RPG than it was action game, where they kind of they changed that with 2 and 3. So they're kind of bringing 1 up to match 2 and 3 put out. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering I'm how... I was wondering yeah. how they were going to do it because, like, yeah, one was definitely the most, like, RPG ass of them. Yeah. And then, like, like two was, like, the middle ground and, like, three was just, like, straight up action. Yeah. Uh, Leo says, yeah, I don't know, an RPG. You don't like RPGs, Leo? <laughs> What's your beef with RPGs, man? <laughs> um, while he answers that, um, I'm glad they're making these changes. There's obviously some graphical changes you can see there in the, the chat. Uh, just the side by sides. It's a it's a noticeable difference, man. I'm excited. Um, I, it looks really nice. They didn't just lazily port it over and up the resolution. They actually changed some of the textures and models. Uh, some of the animations are getting are getting changes. Oh, Leo says he loves RP. Well, good. Then play Mass Effect. Great RP. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, great. When you, you said, like, an RPG, you meant, like, how the stats work. Okay. Fucking. Um, so, he's saying, let's let mages use great swords, let rangers use magic. So, here's my logic here. Uh, the thing that separates Mass Effect from, like, other RPGs or action RPGs is the fact that each character plays differently. You have skills that only that character can do. Uh, they're not traditional, like, uh, barbarian, ranger, healer, black mage. 
Um, and the way they're split up is you do have separate abilities. Like you have uh, uh, the biotic abilities that do like pick people up and throw them. You have the uh, the technical abilities that could like that could um, like hack people or hack enemies or overload their equipment. So that stuff's still there. It's just in Mass Effect One, one thing that was really annoying. Let's say you played like a um, let's say you played like a uh, a biotic, for example, you were stuck with just a pistol. And even though you can you can equip and fire a machine, an assault rifle, a sniper rifle, or a shotgun, you could only use the pistol effectively. And when you put points into it, the pistol is the only thing that went up. At the end of the day, you can use a pistol as efficiently as like any other class. So it just makes more sense to me. If you're a soldier, I think in the universe of the game, it makes sense you can use those other weapons. You might be able, you might not be able to use them as effectively as other classes. But it's, it was still there. He says, just let soldiers use biotics. I mean, that's not happening, but <laughs> it'd be cool to see. Um, if you want to do that, I guess play, play Andromeda. That lets you multi-class. Um, they also advise there's not going to be any new story content. So all the DLC, except for Pinnacle Station, is coming back. And that, that's something that weirded me out. I didn't know how I felt about that when I first heard it. I mean, Pinnacle Station wasn't like, a huge deal. It's not like a huge loss for it to be gone. Well, that's the really thing really that so that they lost that a long time ago when they brought the game to PS3. Yeah. Um, they had to come out and say like, "Hey, it's not going to be on the PS3 version because like <laughs> our um our like our shit corrupted and we can't compile the code and we ha- we'd have to start all over." Um, so they said that's still the case. So. Yeah, and like I get it. It just it sucks because it's supposed to be like the definitive edition of Mass Effect, and it's gonna miss a piece of DLC. Um, yeah. I get it, and it's not like Pinnacle Station is like a huge, like loss. It's basically a, a glorified um, arcade mode. Um, so I'm not like totally broken hearted that it's gone, but it is a bummer that it's not gonna be there. Um, because I I'm expecting like the definitive edition of the game. It's not gonna be there. Um, hopefully some of the content they're finding a way to bring it over. Um, and Leo said they could have rebuilt it. And that's true. They could have, it's not huge. I mean, I did look into it. Apparently the option to rebuild it was on the table would have taken too much time. And it's like, well, you're fucking releasing a remaster of a game that exists. Don't cut content of it. Um, I don't know. I, I would have preferred they kept it. Even if it took a little bit longer, I would have preferred it was still there if they had to do it from scratch, but it's not the end of the world. It's not going to be there. Um, they did unify uh, character creator access across all three games. So those of you who remember, if you played the game originally, uh, your character carried over from one to two, but not two to three. There was some sort of issue with the character creators you had to build your character from scratch if you played on three, at least on console you did. Uh, so now they're unifying that. Uh, the character creator carries over between all three games, and it's going to actually have more options for makeup, skin tone, and hairstyles. Um, even Fem Shep, uh, the female Shepherd model, is being updated for one and two to match how she looked in three and all the marketing material for three. Um, and if you get to like the performance stuff on it, you know, 4K, 60 FPS, HDR, and PS4 Pro, Xbox One X, and PS5, and Xbox Series X or Xbox Series S. Uh, PC is going to have an uncapped frame rate with controller support. Wasabi, I know you're excited about that. <laughs> you know, um, I just, I just, as a, as a master race, uh, uh, as a member of the master race, I enjoy, you know, playing games the way they're meant to be played, and that includes a controller. Um, I prefer mouse and keyboard. Even on PC, I played Mass Effect on a mouse and keyboard, um, and I didn't, I didn't mind it. I liked it. I liked the control you get with a mouse. I feel like the aiming's better, but that's just um, I'm glad that that's still there. Um, what's weird is that the game's going to support DirectX 11, ultra-wide support, dynamic shadows, real-time reflections, but not ray tracing? That's uh, weird. I don't know so why ray they tracing would, would require them to port the game to DirectX 12, ah, uh, which they why. said would just be way too much. I say fucking do it, man. If you're going to Mass Effect's like more than ten years old now. Like, just do it. Like, just do it. Like, just just fucking put it on DirectX 12. 
give us all the bells and whistles we see for modern games. You know, make a fucking thing out of it. I still hold, like, side note, I still hold the Halo remasters to a very high standard. They did a great job remastering those games. Yeah. So I just that, that's like the standard I hold other remasters to. But whatever, I guess, fuck me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the game's using um, faster load times across all platforms, so the elevator scenes can be skipped once it's done loading. Um, I don't mind the elevator scenes as much as other people do. I think it's a cool way to uh, build up the story, learn, learn more about your teammates, uh, even if the elevator scenes take forever to load. But I guess on like a replay, it's nice being able to skip it, get through the game a little bit faster. Um, they are using AI upscaling on all the textures to go for, from 4 times to 16 times, 4x to next. Uh, almost all of Mass Effect 1 and 2's textures have been hand-touched, though. Uh, using and it's going to have uncompressed audio, which I never noticed any audio compression my first playthrough, and all the subsequent times I played through, I never noticed any audio compression. But it'll still be cool to to hear. That's another way to experience the game. If it sounds better than it did before, I'm all for it. Um, the Xbox version can install and uninstall the specific games. Uh, won't have a quick resume option. Um, the PS5 version will have no special dual sense capabilities or a photo mode. Um, so a lot to unpack there. I don't mind so much of the changes. I don't mind so much of what we're not getting. Um, I wish we got it, but it's not the end of the world if we don't. Um, I'm excited to check it out, though, dude. I love me some effect. I'm probably going to pick this. Um, yeah, I'm definitely getting this on PC just yeah, so I can play it the way it was meant to be played from <laughs> start to finish. Yeah, it's a great game, man, and you'll you'll like it a lot. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention, the um Mass Effect 3 did feature a multiplayer mode that will not be coming back with the uh remaster. Um those of you who remember, there was a multiplayer mode to help build up your resources for Mass Effect 3's uh story, and that could actually affect the ending of the game and how much resources Collected. I just had to work a little bit harder if you didn't play the multiplayer mode. Um, it is cool though that they are acknowledging that even though you don't have multiplayer to collect some of those resources, uh, they are going to have options in the game to uh, kind of balance that out. Uh, so that's good. You're not missing out on story stuff. Multi. I remember um, Mass Effect Three. I think if I remember this correctly, was the first time I've ever bought a microtransaction. Really. I think so. I bought um, shit for that multiplayer mode. Um, wow. And I think I ended up with like a harpoon gun that would like one shot motherfucker and it would like stick them to the wall uh, like a <laughs> nail gun. Um, and that was really fun to use. <laughs> um, that's like, cool. That's all I remember about that. Um, I never played it growing up and now like playing it on PC the servers are like they're not down but no one's yeah, that doesn't matter to me. Um, Leo says the the, the uh, multiplayer mode was decent. It was a fun horde mode. It was a fun horde mode, and it sucks that there's not like a way to just play a wave based single player mode. Just fuck around with the character, having to make a whole multiplayer mode around it. But whatever. Um, all in all, if the the core games are still there, and that's what I like about it. Um, I love Mass Effect. I can't stress it enough. I love the Mass Effect games. It is really cool to see them uh, upgrading it. Uh, no talk yet if they're fixing the fucking environments because one complaint, one major complaint I have of Mass Effect 1 that I think aged awful is the environmental design. Um, they, are, they, are fi- they are fixing the they are fixing environment. That? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're, because they're really, they, they gave an example of where they like redesign one area so like the sun was at a better angle so, and it shone through the trees a lot more and, and had a bit more atmospherics um, not just that i'm talking about like the way they use assets so like you can play mass effect one you can find a base for like uh some space pirate team and a planet you can't pronounce in a galaxy solar system that's like a billion light years away from earth and it's going to look exactly the same as like a military base on the moon. <laughs> it's Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of copy and paste their environmental design that I, I, I hate. Um, it's not so bad in the single player if you play the main campaign. 
But if you do the side quests, that stuff gets really old really fast. Um, there's a lot of like even structures that are the, exactly the same. The layout's the same. They just put different. Um, so that's one thing I hope they fix with Mass Effect One. They probably won't. That sounds like way more work than they're willing to put in based on the other cutout. Yeah, that stuff kind of kind of comes with the territory. I mean, if you, you know, like got you got to gin up a lot of like randomized content that. You know, it's, it's it's easier to just create a bunch of assets and then just throw them all over the place. Like Skyrim does that. Like Elder Scrolls does that a lot, where it's like every cave you delve into, yeah, kind of all has the same prefab layouts and shit like that. But I don't know. I'm fine with that. I like it's not so much the locations I care about. I like just exploring in general and just getting into combat and finding loot and shit. I think if they redid those assets, that would, that would make the exploration better, in my opinion. And Leo does bring up a point that there is a lore reason that a lot of early colonization relied on prefab buildings and prefab fabricated structures. So it makes sense story-wise, but how come you don't see those structures in the main campaign? It's the side stuff you see it in. So that's one thing that always bugged me playing through it. Um, and I get it. I get that there's a story reason for it, but what came first, a story reason or the limitation? Um, Leo also did something interesting I wanted to bring up. Uh, they did uh, change some of the camera angles. So the original Mass Effect 2 had some very suggestive camera angles, specifically around, uh, oh, God, I forget the name. Miranda? <laughs> Miranda, yes, around Miranda's ass and titties. There's a lot of camera angles that are very suggestive and got a full shot of that. Very uh, male gazy, I think, is the term for it. Um, Bioware did come out, so they're going to change some of those camera angles. Not a lot, you know, maybe move them up or down a little bit more so it's not so suggestive and lecherous. Which I'm kind of back and forth on because it's not like it's not like anime where it's just there for like a cheap shot. Uh, Miranda's character, that's her whole like arc that she's supposed to be this like hot femme fatale but uses her looks to get what she wants. So I yeah. think that, that, yeah, so I think it makes sense that the camera pans over her body like that because that's how she presents herself. She does that on purpose to put people off guard, to get information, to have people underestimate her. So it makes sense to me for that aspect. I can see why they're taking it out. I'm sure a lot of people didn't like it, but it, that, that's, that's how I always interpreted it. I she's the remember, only character they didn't wear. Like, I don't remember you, anyone remember? complaining about that. But yeah, maybe <laughs> I, I wasn't know. paying attention. I don't I think they're trying to get ahead of it before people complain about it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> um I can see why people don't changed. like it because I can see why people don't like it because at, at first glance it seems like very like cheap and you know, like like anime, it's very like on the nose there to like yeah, i mean if they did it for every character sure but like it's like yeah. her character is that she's like Femme sexy Patel. and shit yeah. yeah so like i only remember them doing it like once or twice like when you first meet her yeah which makes sense because like that's how her character is like the first yeah. thing you notice about her is how she looks and she does that on, and she even admits later in the game like she was just genetically engineered to be like attractive yeah. So she has that, that edge over other people. You know, you let your guard down when you're when you see someone sexy like that, whether you, you whether you want to or not. Um, and so it makes sense when the camera pans on that and notices that that's what everyone notices when they see her. That's the point of the character. Um, again, though, I, 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 I even though I played the games a lot, that, that's something I just kind of like absorbed. I never really like thought about it. So it's possible there might have been other angles for other characters, but if there were, I don't remember them. Um, I just feel like Bioware is getting ahead of a problem that no one has a problem. With. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's whatever. Like I don't really care ultimately. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't kill the game for me. I'm not gonna be like, oh, Feminazis ruined Mass Effect. No, no, <laughs> I'm not gonna do yeah. that. It's still a good game. I'm not that fucking petty to like bash the whole game for that. Um. It just seems kind of shallow, a shallow reason to do it. Because, you know, I don't think they really care. I think they're just doing it to, like, get ahead of the controversy when there's no controversy. Yeah. But whatever. Well, 
Anyway, uh, yeah, so it launches on May 14th. Yes. So, not too long. Yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait to check it out. I love Mass Effect, so I know I keep saying it, but I do. I love me with some Mass Effect. I'm down. Props. Yeah, um, I enjoyed it when I played it, so I'm hoping to play it again and have the correct experience this time. There you go. I'll check it out. I'll watch you play it. Play it on stream. Um... And in some news that surprises nobody, <laughs> uh, Google Stadia is shutting down their, or they did shut down their internal studios and they're changing their business focus. But so you guys remember the Google Stadia came out and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not a lot of fanfare to it. I know there was a lot of excitement before it came out, but there's a lot of issues when it dropped. Uh, we're not going to go into that now. That's not, that's not the story. But the Stadia did not do well, if anyone remembers. Uh, Leo says it's Leo 2.0. No, I'll I'll give them credit was, where it's due. Yeah. Like I um I tried it out for a bit and it like it works as um like as advertised. It's probably the best streaming app, um, at least that I tried. I also mm-hmm. tried Amazon Luna and I've tried GeForce uh NVIDIA's whatever the fuck they call it. Um so like I tried a few of them and Stadia was easily the best one. I mean I loaded up a game of PUBG and and I want I got the chicken dinner in that game out of the one game I, I played. So like it works. Um and I, I know when Cyberpunk came out, they actually like hit it a little bit here, but when Cyberpunk came out, that unless you had like, you know, a thousand dollar PC, this was the only other way to play that game in a in the best way possible. Um so like Stadia had some advantages compared to uh some other alternatives and um but i do i do think its biggest advantage would have been exclusive content i mean they were they were they were touting when they first revealed this thing they were showing like oh what if you could have a battle royale with like infinite players or what if you could have a team game and you could see uh, you could see all the, you could see what all your entire team saw, and you could communicate with each other and and and, and switch between camera angles on the fly and shit like that. And I'm like, that sounds fucking awesome. Like a game created specifically for what the cloud is good at, like this 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 just vast power array of of um of of straight horsepower like if a game is yeah. created specifically for that that could be like really cool and that's the kind of shit i wanted to see but so unfortunately that, yeah. <laughs> uh we're not gonna see that um now st- i don't know what purpose stadia is gonna serve now aside from like yeah a niche a niche purpose where like you've got a game like cyberpunk and um you know, you don't have a thousand dollar PC to do it on and the, the, the consoles ain't doing it right. And and then you have like Stadia, which is easy and you don't have to download it. There's no load. There's no like loading into it and waiting for updates and patches and shit. You just hit the button and go like, it's really good for that, but it's a very niche thing that I don't think a lot of people need. Yeah. And that, that's what's a huge bummer about it. And Hopefully, hopefully, you know, they can do enough with that to maybe revisit um, in-house development in the future. But if they've already committed to shutting it down, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't think they're, they're going that route. Yeah. I know. Google, State, um, Google says they're committed to the future of cloud gaming and they will continue to do their part to drive the industry forward. But you know, if you're not developing games to take advantage of that, how much are you really doing to push it forward? Yeah. Like as, cause, cause now with, with, with this, they're just going to be doing with what the competition is doing, which I mean, they don't have anything that stands out anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, aside from a service that just works, but you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of competition coming out now with everyone doing their own streaming thing. Like Amazon's got theirs now. And then NVIDIA, um, I know X cloud is still doing their shit. Uh, it's, it's just, uh, it's a lot now and they've, they've lost their biggest, 
their their biggest card, their their trap card. So um yeah it's we'll have to wait and see what happens man hopefully like they can bounce back from this they can get back to the uh, individual stuff but uh, i don't know we'll have to wait and see man <laughs> yeah they also announced that jade raymond has left google um entirely and um they closed their two studios uh in montreal and los angeles and um the closure affects over 150 developers who they're getting like replaced somewhere in like other roles in, in Google. So um, hopefully their talents are are useful. Otherwise, I'm sure if you're like a good developer, it doesn't matter if you're making games or like making, you know, other Google related shit. I'm sure you you're you know, you can be useful in other in other areas i'm sure i'm sure they've they've got stuff for that but um yeah it's a bummer man um that was that was the one thing i was hoping would would come out of stadia was like that that exclusive stuff that they that they were talking about sounded really cool like i'm sure like i'm sure it's a developer's dream to be able to just make whatever fucking game comes into their mind without having the limitations of okay well this console can do this and most people have this kind of PC hardware in their system. So we're going to build our game for these limitations. And that's kind of like what Stadia was about was like, oh, you're not going to have these limitations, man. The power of the cloud, we just got all this data. You could just throw whatever you want at it. And there's no limitations. I think there were limitations, but um, they could get around a lot of that. And that's, I don't know. I just want, I was excited of seeing that stuff, but yeah, we'll never never gonna see it now so that's a bummer yeah it's a huge bummer hopefully they'll get back into it you know once more people get into the technology but i'm not holding my breath if it does happen it's not gonna happen yeah and i i don't know you you see this this is happening a lot now like amazon had their studios and like um i know they were trying to make an mmo and I'm not sure how that's going now, but I'm pretty sure like didn't they I launch it that. and was like, um, they like launched it and then canceled it. Like, oh shit, <laughs> like, uh, it's um, like I think these 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 huge money bags are realizing, hey, it's like not easy to just fucking get into games yeah. development. Yeah. So, uh, oh. Toy uh, says that he thinks uh, Microsoft will eventually do it. Yeah, I think so too. If anyone has the assets to do it, it's Microsoft. They have experience in game development. I think if anyone's going to do it, it'd probably be them. Even though they don't have the infrastructure for cloud storage like Amazon or Google has. Well, they do. They do. They do. They do. Uh, Microsoft has Azure servers, which oh, runs. Oh, I forgot about um, that. Those servers run PSO2, uh, and it runs. They have like a lot of shit running on that, but they have like it's it's called Azure servers, which they they have X Cloud, so like they they are doing it. Um, like it's included with Game Pass. I've also tried X Cloud, and that was not great. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh they're doing it though. Um, okay, I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. know they had the same like a similar infrastructure to compete with like Google and Amazon. That's good. Well, if yeah. that's the case, then maybe Microsoft will pull it off. If anyone can, it'll be them. They have not just the infrastructure to make it happen, but the game development yeah. history, too. Yeah. I mean, we'll see. Um, Blizzard, another some quickie news. Uh, Blizzard is saying not to expect Diablo 4 or Overwatch 2 to launch in 2021. Um, honestly, huge bummer, man. <laughs> um, I'm excited yeah. for Diablo 4. This actually, um, so that, like this news came out of Jeff Keighley for some reason. I don't know why he was the one that announced this, but, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think anyone really expected those games to come out in 2021. I mean, when they announced them, it just felt like, I mean, first of all, they had nothing to show for them. And then, um, also like they were in some like hot water when they announced these shits. Like I felt like is one to get people's attention off of like the Hong Kong shit and they wanted to distract people from uh just that but they're having like fucking just bad shit after bad shit dude like there was a the Hong Kong shit was a big one 
uh, Diablo Immortal, fucking uh, yeah. Warcraft 2 Reforged. Yeah. Like, oh, there's so much shit, dude. Yeah, and so I felt I like they just, they like, did. they, like, smashed the glass on their, like, emergency announcement shit and was like, oh, here's a here's a Diablo 4 trailer. Yeah, now you like us. Uh, what about uh, smash the glass on this? Here's uh, Overwatch 2. Yeah. Which sounds like a fucking glorified DLC. Like Overwatch 2, like didn't they say it's like it'll be like an upgrade to the base game or some shit? Yeah. Um, it's going to add a campaign. <laughs> dude, Overwatch is not going to survive for another year, man. Like people are already uh, miffed about that game. Yeah. So the fact that, yeah, dude, that game is like dying, man. It's, it's been dying for a while now and it's. <laughs> like no they idea. expect it to last a whole other year now. Like it's it's I don't know about that. Um, yeah. So this is interesting to say the least. But I'm a uh, yeah. I would I would like a Diablo, you know. But uh, yeah. This is uh, I don't I don't know what Blizzard is doing now. So yeah, I did. I'll have to wait and see. Um, I was talking to a buddy of mine about it. Because, you know, like, I'm, I'm fucking... I love Diablo 3, dude. I play that every season. I fall back in love with that game. Uh, it's a begrudging love, but I still love it. Um, and when my buddy and I found out Diablo 4 got announced, I was like, are you going to pick it up? And he's like, nah. Like, are you? Nah. <laughs> Mainly because they, they fucked up, like, war, like reforged so hard. And if you guys remember, Diablo 3 was a fucking nightmare when that first launched. It took them a while for that to get with one. So that's why I'm thinking like Diablo 4 might be similar. So that's why I'm personally going to wait on it until the reviews come in. But yeah, we'll wait and see what happens, man. And as for Overwatch, I never played Overwatch. So it sounds sound really a big deal for me, whether that comes. Um, another quickie uh, GoldenEye. And a GoldenEye Xbox 360 remaster is had leaked and is fully playable. Yeah. Apparently, I, from what I've been told, the backstory of this, and this is something that uh, Microsoft was working on with Rare, and the reason why it never got released because the license issues for GoldenEye 007, the game, are like, fuck. Yeah. So, basically... Um... It's it, it's funny how they got a hold of this. So like this this has actually been floating around for like a while now, but I guess um uh I guess like some like people have been like making modifications to it so that it would actually like be able to run. Um but back on Xbox 360 there was this thing called Partner Net, which was on like the developer consoles. And yeah. what it was was it was a way for um developers to share their um just to share early builds of their games that uh, it was easier to test and iterate on. But, mm-hmm. um, um, and all you needed was like a dev console and you could just log into this thing, just like it was, um, Xbox live. Um, and when those system, when those dev consoles red ringed, they would just dump them, uh, in like a, a, like a landfill. So people could go and get those, like those, those, those motherboards or like those systems and like just attach like a normal ass hard drive to them and and then they they could just get them to run so Are you fucking serious and there oh was no God. there was no security on it either so like you could just boot the thing up um and just download all these fucking things not only that not only that but like even between different like developer development studios it was basically just like Xbox Live and you would just log in and just see a bunch of games on there so like you get like spy on say i was like activision and i was like I, you could spy on like ea's games because they would have shit on there you could see what the competition was doing and be like oh shit they're, they're, okay they're doing that let's do something like that like it was fucked man so <laughs> and then they just kept they kept having shit like leak out of it and uh, um as well there's a good um there's a good video on it i think um i forgot who did it but um there's a good video on on the um on the history of a uh, partner net 
but long story short, it was just a catastrophic fuck up. So like, um, after, uh, after it was getting like abused for so many years, they, they ended up shutting it down, but the damage was done. So like, um, um, this, this was on there for a while and, um, people got a hold of it, but like, um, over the years they've made a lot, a bunch of modifications to it. So, um, um, you know, they, they added like 21 by nine support and, um, they like made it so that it can be ran on like a non-development console and shit like that. So fucking um, beautiful. <laughs> That's fucking beautiful, man. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's it's really cool stuff, man. Um, I I downloaded I downloaded a copy of it, but um, um, I can't get it to run right, right yet. But um, I've I've tried the Xbox 360 emulator. It's not as good as the PS3 one. So like, but um, I like I I've I've loaded Perfect Dark on there, and I've played that, and that was like most it was okay. But yeah, this um. Yeah, it, this is just super interesting. Jesus Christ, <laughs> that's that's pretty cool, man. Uh, I love I, I, what I love more about the remasters a story about it, like how people found it. I love stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a good again, there's good stuff on on Partner Net on uh, on YouTube. Again, there's a lot of uh, licensing issues behind that remaster, so I will never see it uh currently um j- just off the top of my head this isn't even like something i know for sure you know sony owns uh the james bond license so i'm sure you need to get permission from them to release this game even though it's a remaster um on top of that pierce brosnan's face and the face of all the other actors in that in the original um golden eye are available in the game so i'm sure yeah. they get all their permission to do it too ned, ned stark got all the music in there too like god there's so much shit that just thinking about it like that's a legal copyright nightmare so i'm not surprised that that's what's holding it back i mean they Um, did they had the go ahead at some point they had the go ahead to at least like start making it so um the story isn't out on like what happened but they at least they were working on it so it's not like it's not like they just they had to know from the beginning. Like someone had to say yes to be like, yeah, you can start on this. Um, like some, something had to happen in the middle where it was like, okay, stop, like stop, we're not doing it anymore. Um, and that that's the story that you you want to hear. Yeah, I mean, we'll wait and see. Hopefully, something does come out of it. Enough interest is there. I'm not gonna hold my breath, but we'll see. Um, yeah. Prince of Persia, Sands of Time remake, got a delay. So I like Prince of Persia. I got into Prince of Persia late in life uh, when I was like, God, I think I was like 15 when I first played Prince of Persia. So that was like after the games had already been released and out. Like the remake, not the remake, the uh, like the new one had come out that nobody liked. Like that, that's that's when I got into it. Um, and I liked, the, I liked them. The only one I haven't played is the first one, surprisingly. Uh, this girl I was dating loaned me uh, two and three, but not the first one. Have it, uh, but she told me to skip it because it wasn't that good, so I never played it. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to have a chance to play it now, uh, but unfortunately, there is an update. That the game is being delayed. Um, normal dev stuff. Um, well, basically, what I, mean that, right? basically I... I just want. To... Yeah, you, you you finish. Well, what they're saying here is, um, so I don't know if you remember when they showed this game for the first time, uh, like when they announced this, but everyone pretty much fucking hated the way it looked like they were clowning on this shit hard. I didn't Uh, think it looked that bad. Um, but then I saw how much they were charging for it and I was like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so they pretty much say here, we saw an outpouring of feedback from you on this beloved franchise. Um, it is your passion and support that is driving our development to make the best game possible. With that said, we've made the decision to shift the release of Prince of Persia to a later date. Um, so they're pretty much saying without saying it, but I think that that feedback is like, it's making them reconsider. 
um which is good i like i like when um you know that they they i like when they listen to the fans right because the fans are yeah. are what's important like if <laughs> if no one talks shit about halo when they showed that we wouldn't be getting a better halo right if no one yeah. talks shit about sonic the hedgehog movie we wouldn't <laughs> be getting this a better sonic movie like it's so and this stuff works like there's history of it working like you said halo did it um the sonic movie did it even more recently the bloodstain do you remember that when that trailer first dropped Everyone was shitting on it, and they made like a whole new trailer. Like, okay, we listened to what you had to say, and they even had comments of people saying like, "This game looks like shit." Yeah. And Kogi Arashi was like, "It doesn't look like shit anymore. Check this shit out." <laughs> it was great. <laughs> um. So yeah, I fully, I fully. This is um. This is a good thing for them to just come out and be like, "Okay, we we heard you. We're listening. We're gonna delay it and fix it." So. Um. Yeah, yeah so. so it'll be cool to see. Um, it'll be cool for me to play Prince of Persia. I mean, I never played the first one. I love the second one, and I think the third one's pretty good, too. Uh, so yeah. it'll be cool for me to... I mean, though I haven't, God, I haven't played them in the years, so I don't even know if they're still good. <laughs> I remember loving them a lot when I was younger, but I haven't played them recently. Uh, yeah. Hopefully it's good. We'll have to wait and see uh, what happens with this. Um, I'm excited, man. That's just it. Like, I'm excited. I love when games get delayed. I know it's... Sounds weird, but I love when games get delayed. When games get delayed, I know I'm going to get a good game eventually. Uh, Twife says he thinks the first one was better than the second. Depends on who you talk to. Uh, the second one was kind of edgy, not I remember. <laughs> Had a lot, a lot of heavy metal music, which didn't make any sense. Yeah, that was like Fucking the turn smack. like back then. Yeah. Like they would always make like they would turn their cute game into like, oh yeah, we're fucking metal now. We've got like remember like Jack, Jack and Daxter, and then yeah. like <laughs> uh, Jack X or whatever the fuck it was. Like, yeah, I remember everyone that. has to have that turn. Uh, Sonic, uh, like Shadow the Hedgehog. And here's my defense, like. I, I did like Prince of Persia. It got it got me into the Prince of Persia games. I played two. Like this girl, like I got like backstory again. The girl I was dating was super into them. She she heard I like video games. She saw my video game collection. She's like, "You play Prince of Persia?" I said, "No." She gives the second one, and I tell her she not play the first one. She was like, "No, the second one's better. Just play that one." And I guess depending on who you ask, a lot of people say the second one did a lot of improvements to the gameplay to make it worth playing. But I have no basis for comparison. All I know is that. The first one was somewhat based in like Persian mm -hmm. lore with actual Persian music and instruments. The second one was like edgy mid 2000s Godsmack soundtrack. <laughs> um, and actually, Toyf is uh, mentioning how a lot of people are so split between the second, the first and second. At the third one, did like a kind of a split personality thing with the character where you had like the good prince and the dark prince. And that stuff, I got that vibe from it too. <laughs> I mean, hopefully, I mean, if the first game does well, you know, if they remake the first one, we might get the second, the third one out. Um, I can't wait to see it come out again. Um, I like Prince of Persia. This will be, this will be cool to play. So, yeah. Uh, but, you know, excited. they're also, they're calling this a remake and, and not a remaster. So, yes. So um, that's another thing that weirded me out. It's like, we're getting, we're getting a new game out of this. So, yeah. Hopefully this will spark like a whole new Prince of Persia like franchise. You know, Prince of Persia remakes, kind of like how. Uh, I don't know about all that. Well, hopefully, I mean, you never know, man. Look, look what happened with back, later. Bring back Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. Um, in other quickie news, Quantic Dream. Yes, that Quantic Dream is expanding, opening up a second studio in Montreal. Uh, if you guys remember Quantic Dream, uh, they made some. Uh, God, uh, they made um, Beyond Two Souls. Um, heavy Rain. Heavy Rain and Detroit. One other one, Detroit Become Human, and Indigo Prophecy. Yeah. I, how did I remember Indigo Prophecy? But I like the three most popular <laughs> games. <laughs> they're, they're good ones. <laughs> yeah. Um, I played Heavy Rain. I liked Heavy Rain. Um, Quantic yeah, I dare Dream you to play it again. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't played it in like years, so I might take I you. I don't on think that bed. game holds up. It's it's um, 
I don't think any of the other games hold up really, but um, <laughs> they 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 all have moments that I really like, but as a whole, not so much. Um, but uh, this is exciting for them because um, they they must be doing pretty well for themselves to um, yeah, open up a second studio like that's dope. yeah, <laughs> and and in North America, so like it's just a whole nother yeah. um, you know, side of of talent. Uh, that um that like i'm i'm interested to see what uh what they come up with next dude same i am uh, interested too to see what happens especially with the backing of like you know more real estate they can hire more people i yeah. want to see what they what they do man even though like i might not like quote unquote all of their games um i am I just, excited I just, to see what they put out i do I like, like the ambition i like the ambition yeah. behind it so same. Um, there's some more people I, I drive wish you would make a fucking movie instead of just trying to work games out, but yeah, definitely, you know, definitely. But I don't I, think I any of those, that. none of those games will work as a movie, though. Like, none of them, <laughs> they hardly work as games, if you're yeah. Honest. Um, <laughs> um, but no, uh, joking aside, no, they are a very ambitious studio. Um, and they do, they do, they, I'll give them credit, they have the balls to do something different, you know, they're they, they could pump out generic action games whenever they wanted to and they don't they want to focus on the cinematic experience and try to uh what's the term they always use like evolve gaming take gaming to the next level even yeah. though i don't personally believe the next level of gaming is just making them into movies but whatever um that's a whole um, argument for another fucking well it's game. the it's the interactive element that only works when it's a video game it's like it's 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 the same thing that i like i don't know i keep you know this is always the example i'm going to bring up but like kojima and death stranding it's like that that game just doesn't work <laughs> like i'm i'm not going to sit there and tell you it's a good game but like it's super unique and super memorable and it only works as a video game um that's an experience you will never you will never get that experience from like I would rather play that than a better game um that just you know checks all the boxes from what you yeah. expect out of a game. Um now, that's one thing I always liked about Kojima is that he's not afraid to like acknowledge that these are video games, but he wants yeah. to push the envelope with them. Like some kind of tangent. I remember being a kid watching my dad play the first Metal Gear Solid. And, you know, characters never acknowledge they're in a video game. You know, that's just like a rule, you know, that, yeah. that the game was like an outlet. People, same way characters don't acknowledge that they're in a movie, video game characters don't acknowledge that they're in a video game. But I remember watching my dad play Metal Gear Solid, and the voice cutscenes were telling you, push this button to reload, push this button to open your menu. And I was like, oh, they're acknowledging that they're in a game. Like, <laughs> this isn't some random tutorial telling me to push this button. This yeah. is the kernel. Well, they'll snake. say like they'll say like that push button. the action button and then snake yeah. will be like what and then he'll be like oh you'll know what i'm talking about when you when you see it or something like that yeah like little things like that i think are cool and like stuff like that only works in a game and i want to see more of that in my games you know i don't, I don't want to see my games trying to be movies you know because that's not movies work as movies games work as games um, yeah. You can try to do both, but I mean, Quantic Dreams has been doing it for years, and you know, where's that gotten them really? They got a new studio, I'll give them that, but those aren't the games people are talking. If you look at like some of the best games of all time, no one's talking about Heavy Rain. Um, <laughs> you know, those games don't make those top ten lists. I'm just saying. Um, Metal Gear Solid does, Undertale does. You know, games that acknowledge that they're video games and they work based off of a video game, not trying to replicate yeah. another. Form. Outer Wilds. I know you. Keep t I'm gonna play. I promise. I promise. Just settle down. <laughs> I'm just saying when you're, when you're talking about best games of all time, uh, <laughs> that's definitely one. That's definitely one that's that's on there. Yeah. Um. Um. But yeah, good. Good for them expanding, opening up a second studio in Montreal. Uh, hopefully, we get some cool shit out of it. Like that's. I love seeing. I don't like seeing companies fail. I don't like seeing games fail because I like seeing games. I like seeing more games, even games I don't want to play. I like hearing about them. So it'll be cool to see Quantic Dreams I'll open up another studio and with that extra manpower put out something special. Yeah. Especially with the power of the PS5, like backing them up. I mean, Quantic PS5 Dreams is still like and, not and PC. They're, you know, they put yeah. their games on PC now. So 
uh, two of us saying that uh, which one is on there for the best game of all time? Ninja Gaiden? Question mark. Um, Never played no. Ninja Gaiden. I wish I had. I, I feel like I'd like it. I like Devil May Cry. I like Bayonetta. So I feel like I'd like Ninja Gaiden. But there's not like a comfortable way to play that. Like, I have to go back and buy original hardware to play it. Fuck that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> it's on. Actually, a... I think my has a copy of Ninja Gaiden Sigma here somewhere. I can probably borrow that. From it's on it's on playstation now if you want to go that route but fuck that (laughs) playstation now is not bad i've I've tried that as well it's not it's not bad a really like input heavy game like ninja gaiden a really reaction heavy game like ninja gaiden you you'd be surprised playstation now is actually it's not it's not that bad it's not as noticeable as you as you think but all right, I'll give it a shot. I think I still, I think they're still doing like free, like fifteen day membership or something. If you sign up, try that. Um, uh, we got some trailers to go over. I mean, the Mass Effect Legendary Edition trailer dropped. Uh, we kind of showed that off a bit when we were talking about Mass Effect earlier. Um, yeah. I'm still excited for it, man. I still want it. <laughs> not, not a lot. I can, not a lot of bad things I can say about that. You put Mass Effect in front of me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen to you. Um. We also got a trailer for Destiny 2 uh, Beyond Light Season of the Chosen. It's a new um, expansion? For oh, it's Destiny a new season. Or... It's a season. season. So, yeah, these uh, games do things in seasons. So, uh, um, but, um, man, I got to, you know, a lot of people still scoff at, at Destiny, but um, it's... I'm... Yeah, you you were singing its praises, man. You say they've come a long way. Like they're a competent, actually kind of fun looter shooter now. Yeah, well, I mean, I would say it's more than kind of fun. Look, th- there's a pedigree here with with Bungie. Okay, they know how to make a fucking shooter. All right, so like yeah. that that part they've got nailed. What they what they didn't have nailed was um, the the that. games as a service aspect of it. Um, so like they, the 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 benefit that they have is that they've had the time to figure their shit out, whereas everyone else doing it has not. I mean, everyone is trying to emulate Destiny, and they've had the time to make the mistakes and and right their wrongs, and they've done that. They've 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 done it. Like it's it's exactly where it needs to be at this point. It's um like if you're if you're looking to get into a games as a service game at this point. Destiny is the tried and true one um, at this yeah. point, and everyone else is still playing catch up and still it's making the same mistakes that Destiny either. made like five years ago. And it's not a bad option either, especially since like Destiny 2 is free to play now, right? You just got to buy the expansions. Yeah, yeah, Find free it. to play. So, like, you can get in there and try it out. And if you, you know, don't like it, um, you know, you can just stop. But it's like, it's really good though. I might check it out now that it's it's free to play. I have no reason not to try it. it might be fun. Yeah. You stream. Um, we also got a trailer for a new uh, Final Fantasy expansion. Final Fantasy fourteen is getting a new expansion called Endwalker. Um, it looks cool, man. Uh, people talk a lot about Final Fantasy fourteen. Like, take the MMO stuff out of it. People still say it's a solid Final Fantasy game, even without the MMO stuff. In it. Um. And then yeah. that's my only gripe is that I'm not an MMO guy. Yeah, it's still an MMO. So um, I'm just not a fan of this style of MMO anymore. Also, like it's a subscription MMO and there's tons of better free options like PSO2. Um, so, but like, um like if you had to pay for an MMO these days, this would be the one to do uh, just because it is um, very high quality. Um, yeah. It's on console. I, I tried it. Yeah. It's on console. It's on PC. Um, I tried getting back into it before heaven sword came out. Yeah. Um, and I, I, again, same thing. Like I girl got me into it. <laughs> I was trying to, she was talking a lot about it. I went to play it and we played Get them for a on the bit. podcast, man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't talk to these girls anymore, man. Um, one of them, one of them's a bitch. The other one's married. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. If they I mean, if they like games, then fucking, you know, um, different perspective. 
Um, I tried getting into 14. Uh, this girl tried to get me into it. Um, because she knew she knew I like Final Fantasy. She was super into the MMO. I tried playing it. She played with me a little bit, and I, I fell off. I could not get into it. I've tried on two occasions to get into MMOs. One of them was under the promise of pussy, yeah, which didn't get anywhere. Yep. Another time was the Star Wars MMO, which I fucking I'll argue I love Star Wars more than pussy, and I still didn't <laughs> get, get me into MMOs. So. <laughs> So uh, maybe I'm just not built to like MMO, but there's certain kinds of my, my problem is like this specific kind of, um, hot bar MMO. I'm not, I'm just not into anymore. Um, like I much prefer the, the action oriented style of like a, um, of like a black desert or, or black um, is another one. Black desert is like a full on like action MMO and I still yeah. can get into it. I just don't like MMOs, man. I think I just be. Yeah, there's, 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 there's ones that that like, um, because I'm more of like a solo. I'm like a solo play. Like I don't like teaming yes. up with people because like, um, like I like to get high as fuck and play these kinds of games, and and it really slows me down. So like when there's other people there, I feel like I'm uh, and them down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, <laughs> um. So like I tend to play solo and like most MMOs are not great solo. Um, um, PSO2 is, but PSO2 isn't really an MMO. It's more of like a monster hunter sci-fi uh, a- a- anime game. So um, anime and monster. How come we never told him it was like monster hunter? I would have downloaded I'm it. Pretty sooner. sure I did, but <laughs> I'm sure <you> <laughs> I'll uh, give it a try now. I mean, um, loose, loosely, most, like loosely, but you can't fucking stop, stop pussy fighting with this. Well, Do you want me like, to play PSO2 or not? Like, you there's certain expectations that there's expectations when you say Monster <laughs> Hunter. There's expectations. So like, and I and I know that, but a lot of people don't. And so like, when I say Monster Hunter, I mean more Monster Hunter in the style of like it's not an mmo it's like a four like a party of four you go in and do a mission and then come back and then like but you're not like carving up the monster pieces and shit like that um i'll still i'll I'll check it out um if you like final fantasy 14 you're probably you've probably already heard of this expansion honestly um i noticed there's two people who like like who play final fantasy 14 like people who fucking love it and buy every expansion when it comes out, and people who don't care. <laughs> I'm, I'm one of those people. I just don't care. Um, um, they have a I really mean, good free trial that you can get into, and um, yeah. you can try all the classes up to like a certain level. But it's a pretty generous. It's a pretty generous amount that you can um, play for free now. So I'll probably give it another shot. Like my my buddies, my D and D buddies. Like one of them plays Final Fantasy 14 quite a bit, and he loves Final Fantasy 14. Like he has a yeah. dedicated day where he like raids and build. Like how how we know it he is like second job for the dude. Um, so I might get back into it, play with him. But we'll... um, uh, we also got a quickie like a trailer for Team 17's new game, Narita Boy. Yeah, which I like the way this game looks, dude. <laughs> it looks dope. It's got it's it's like a synth wave low sci-fi CRT Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah. And I love it for that. It's got like this mystery and like world design, like this crazy mystery uh, creature design from Dark Souls, but it has more of like a synth wave, low bit CRT design to it. You know what I mean? Like low, I think it turns like low sci-fi or lo-fi. Um, I dig it. I think it's really cool. I love the the music that's in that trailer. I love the creature designs. I love the character designs. I love the environment design. Uh, the animation's super fluid. I really like that too. Um, I'm into it, man. <laughs> I really want to try this game out. Like when this game drops, I'm I'm gonna be first in line. Yeah. Oh. So fucking badass, man. Um, it reminds yeah. me of um Hyper Light Drifter, but with like a yes. um. Like an '80s synthwave filter on it. Yes, I love it for that. Um, 
it also reminds me of um oh god what was that fucking game that that metroidvania that came out a while ago blasphemous it reminds me of oh, blasphemous yeah. but like with a like a synth wave like design to it i know we keep saying synth wave but like that's what it is like i don't know how else to describe it <laughs> yeah like, it looks cool as hell i'm into it i'm super into it um i can't wait till this drops man um Everyone who hates chromatic aberration is going to fucking hate this game because it's just all over the place. It is. And it's got this like CRT like filter over it too. That's kind of that, that in anything else would be annoying, but I feel like that's part of the aesthetic. So I'll deal with it. Yeah. Um, I like it, dude. I'm into it. Uh, there's no release date yet, but I'm, I'm checking it out. Um, we also got a trailer for Skull Girl Second Encore is getting a new character, Annie of the Stars. Honestly, okay. I, I didn't know this game was still being developed or still. Yeah, that's out. why I put it in here because I'm like, this game's people are still, not only are people still playing it, but they're playing it enough that uh, they're still adding characters to it. Um, uh, this game still gets a lot of attention at the at, at, at uh, in the FGC, dude. Like the fighting game community loves. Skull Girls. Really? Um, yes. It still has a pretty strong following. I wouldn't say huge following, but it's a very strong, passionate following uh, for Skull Girls. And it's a great game. Like, um, out of the two of us, I think I'm the, the, the fighting game expert between the two of us. I wouldn't even say yeah. expert. I just play fighting games and I pay a little bit more attention to them than the average person. You know, I'm not FGC levels at all, but um skull girls is very is a very fun fighting game um and i I like it a lot it definitely gives me these uh not marvel versus capcom but capcom versus snk feel to it uh that i really really like uh like uh, it says get it on google play and the app store yeah skull girls is uh available on mobile too and it looks like the dlc is available on mobile now oh Tuf says he participated in evo 2013 and 2019 that's dope dude i've always wanted to go but i I, I would never be able to compete i would just go to watch Uh, i made plans to actually go with a buddy of mine but then the pandemic happened so (laughs) that didn't happen um yeah i would love to go to evo though dude i love watching fighting games i love playing fighting games i love watching fighting games played at like a competitive level and skull girls is one of the best so i'm not I'm surprised that they're still releasing DLC characters for it, but I'm not like that because the game still does get a lot of attention, especially at Evo. Um, I think it's participated at Evo like every year since it's come out. I think there's never been a date that I missed. Um, whereas Capcom Infinite, <laughs> I think it, I don't even think it made Evo the year it came out, <laughs> but whatever. Um, this looks cool. Annie looks like a really cool character, a mix of, uh, rushdowns and uh, a lot of air control i like her a lot um i definitely want to check this character out once that drops um oh, I they're, they're teasing them. another character too oh were they At the end of the yeah. trailer oh shit that's cool interesting that is interesting i'm excited now can't wait to see what they do with it um yeah man i'm excited um i love me some skull girls i want to see this character come out I'll probably boot up my old copy and play her around a little bit. Boot it up. I will. Boot it up around the podcast and get my ass kicked online. Because yeah. the only people playing Skull Girls online are like hardcore FGC players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing is like I, I I played this game when it came out on uh I had it on PS3 and I have it on Steam. And like I was okay online. Uh I think I used to use Misfortune. Misfortune and, is fun. Um, I love Misfortune. And I was like, I was okay online, but like nowadays, gotcha. it's like anyone playing this still. It's like, remember when we booted up um, Third Strike? I'm like, the yes. only people playing this is going to be like some nasty, savage motherfuckers. I remember that. We got bodied by that one random for a couple fights. And once yeah. I figured him out, I dipped. Oh, do you still have that? That stream, by the way? Is there any way you still have that? I would love to um, see that again. Uh, I might. Uh, oh, you know what? I lost my hard drive that had um, uh, everything archived on it. Tube said uh, third strike. Yeah, we played uh, years ago. I think when we around when we first started doing uh, Gameverse, or when I first started joining Gameverse, um, we were just 
streaming some random games and third strike was on PlayStation now right so we just played that for a little bit yeah i busted out my fight stick um i did pretty well but for the most part we got fucking bodied by one like makoto player <laughs> it was still fun though like, i still had fun playing it and i figured him out eventually and once i figured him out he kind of dipped because he wasn't like bodying us anymore but <laughs> yeah it was fun it was still a fun experience which, side note, Third Strike is like my favorite fighting game, so I love me some Third really? Strike. I fucking Third Strike. Yeah, dude, I love me some Third Strike. Did you ever try Dive um, Kick? I've never tried Dive Kick. I want to, though. I've heard it's fun. Even though it's not like really hardcore, it has like a lot of the fun mechanics you see in fighting games, you know, reading yeah. your opponent, when to attack, when to block. Um, I like that about it. And I like that's kind of like a parody of fighting games, too. I like that a lot, too. Yeah. It's really fun. Uh, I would love to try Dive Kick uh, one day, maybe. Um, uh, Two says that uh, Third Strike is one of the best Street Fighters. I think it is the best Street Fighter. Honest. <laughs> it's between that and Capcom vs. SNK2. I think are like my two favorite. Um, after uh, the Skull Girl show, we had a trailer for Chris Tales, which the name sounds familiar, but I don't recognize anything in this trailer. Um, so I don't know if I've heard this before. They've been showing this for a while, and I think it's only just now starting, almost releasing. Um, because it's in my Steam wish list, so like, I know it's been around for a while, but um, I- I've heard the name. I've seen the name come up a lot, but I recognize the name, but I don't recognize the character or this trailer. And the reason I know that is because I would have fucking definitely remembered this trailer. Trailer looks yeah. phenomenal. Um, it's like a Paper Mario style, like role, like turn based RPG. What I'm getting from the trailer here, and it looks yeah. dope. Dude. Like, uh, the art style is beautiful. Um, this is one of my examples that I love 2D games, and I feel like gaming was too quick to throw away 2D games. Once we got into 3D. 2D games got thrown by the wayside, and I love seeing games like this that are, are in two dimensions, but they take advantage of the hardware they're on. They can make beautiful looking. This, this looks like a fucking anime, dude. It's beautiful. Yeah, I, um, I, I can imagine a... seeing this on TV. Like it's so good. Um, sometimes the, these types of games look awkward when they, when they don't like nail the look. Sometimes it looks awkward. I remember it was a game on PS3 called time and eternity and it was basically like an anime ass anime game and the art style and the animation style they used like tried to mimic an anime and um it ended up looking like weird it was like a third person aspect um camera style as well and it just looked parts of it looked weird but parts of it looked really good as well um, I saw screenshots of it, and the screenshots look good, but I'm, I'm seeing it in motion. I'm like, this is weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I see exactly what you mean. It's like a weird hybrid of like 2D and 3D. Yeah. But it's cool, though. Like, I kind of dig it. Um, but then yeah, you have I, the games that, like, Guilty Gear nailed it, I think. Yeah. Um, Guilty Gear nailed it. Um, like, those South Park games fucking nailed that look. Um, so uh, it can definitely be done. I want to get more like weird about it. Um, there's that uh, dust, dust did it too, and it looked beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So it's possible. Um, and I want to see more of that. I would love to see more. this time of eternity game looks pretty interesting. I, I kind of want to check this out. <laughs> I might. It's not great. I, it's I not might. Great. Oh, it looks cool. I might buy a loose copy of this. If I'm being honest. <laughs> that so it's a PS3 game, and um. You'd be, uh, you would have a hard time trying to play that. I think <laughs> you you probably have to emulate it. it. Looks clunky, but it well, I, I like just it. mean because there's no there's no way to play it unless you have a PS3. I have a PS3. Oh, I do you? Find, how much? How much can I play this game go for? Hold on. Um, I forgot how I even got that game. I think I had to buy it from the Korean or the um. Southeast Asia PSN. I don't remember if that was ever released in North America. 
I could be wrong on that though. Uh, NIS America developer. Uh, yeah, loose copies go for like 20 bucks on eBay. All right, okay. Yeah, so so yeah, it's, not, not... it's not a great game. It's not great, but um, oh, it doesn't, it doesn't look great. <laughs> it's interesting, <laughs> it's play, but it doesn't look great. Yeah, play it if you're interested in it, but that's it's out of the like, yeah. Don't play it because it, you think it might be good because it's it's not. <laughs> um, the whole the whole th- premise is that she has like multiple personalities. Um, so like in the middle of a fight, she'll like snap into another personality. Um, where she has like a cute one and like a mean one, and um, she'll has like different abilities based on like what personality she's in. It's um, it's okay. I'm not seeing that at all in this play video. I'm just seeing her shooting dudes and cutting them with a knife. Yeah. It's, it's a turn-based RPG without parties. Oh, here we go. Her, her hair just changed. Is that the person? Yeah, yeah. Her hair just changed from yellow to red. Okay. So that that's how you get around, like, having multiple party members. It's probably expensive to, like, animate this model. Well, it's not even a model. It's legit just, like, a drawing. It's a sprite, but it's a really high-quality sprite. Yeah, I'd be I'd be interested in seeing how, um, how they do these kind of um animations in the in the in the games. But yeah, okay, now I'm remembering. Okay, so like now I'm seeing it again. Yeah, they would threat they they had like three D environments with your two D character in it, and that's why it looked weird. Um, they didn't fully commit to the. <laughs> to like drawing everything in 2d or, you know, in that style. So like you had a clash of two different styles that just didn't, yeah. didn't look great. So, um, yeah. And then you had like a real time dodge button, like a sidestep. So like, if you saw an, if you saw an attack coming, you could sidestep it or you could try to, but it didn't feel great. <laughs> um, I'm like yeah. watching this game, but the other one running around it, it looks really awkward. Cause like, they're not, I don't believe that they're moving. They're like floating. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're floating with the animation. Over. But it's like, it's like Resident Evil controls where it's like, um, you know, tank, you know, tank controls. And that's probably because they need to control the camera angle because it's a sprite. <laughs> it's not a fucking model. Yeah. So you can't exactly use the camera angle on how you view that sprite. Yeah. Um, we got a little off track there, but it looks cool. I'll check Very it out. Very off track, but I don't know. It's it's not many people have played this game, so like I've never even heard of this game. <laughs> like I'm glad I got this game to Um Yeah, th- this game is um I'm know. watching a cut really awkward. <laughs> the cutscene's really awkward. Oof, that's Yeah. But you know, I think it was it was impressive at the time because it was one of the first games like this is before like guilty gear was doing it and like before anyone else was doing this so like as like a as a first one of the first attempts it was impressive at that i think that's why um that's why i picked it up it was because just how unique it was at the time now everyone's doing it so and they're doing it way better than this so it's interesting i'm definitely adding it to my list just to check it out yeah um i also got well, anyway, Chris, Ta- Chris Tales looks good. <laughs> I don't want to take too much attention away from that game. Chris Tales looks good. Um, I love the graphical style for it. Um, I think it does a great job with this hand-drawn style because the uh, environment itself is the same type of design. Uh, the gameplay looks really neat. It looks like Paper Mario, but I'm not sure if that's like what it's going for. Um, I'm into it. I'll definitely be picking this one up when it comes out. Um. We also got a trailer for Fall Guys Season 3, their mid-season 3.5 update. We yeah. talked about Fall Guys back on the podcast. It might be fun looking into now because they're adding some cool shit, some new tracks. But I don't know how... How, uh, kind of, how much like legs it has at this point. Yeah. Um, I, I know they did add, I loaded it up not too long ago. They did add, you can choose like which um, game you want to play, not specific game, but like you can choose which season you want to play. 
Um, so like the new season will only have the new games. Um, okay. and then you can, you can choose the mode that just has like, you know, different shit. Um, so like, that's cool. But I think really they're um, just like trying to market like a new outfits and shit mostly. Yeah, I don't think it's enough to get me back into it, but maybe after a while, after they've updated enough, I can get back into it and try. Um, yeah. That's the Fall Guys hour. Um, Resident Evil 4 HD. Uh, I talked about this a couple times in the podcast, the Resident Evil 4 HD project. It is a uh, project by a small group of fans uh, from Spain, actually, to uh, remake Resident Evil. Well, not remake, but like re... Remaster <laughs> Master and I forgot that. Um, there's actually a lot more work going into this than you would think, because a lot of the models weren't visible in their low sense versions or in their low um, their low resolution versions. So a lot of the models you're seeing here, a lot of the textures you're seeing here, are actually made by hand by these because they weren't just upright. Um. And there's actually some videos of them like going to like different parts of Spain and like getting pictures to use as references for a lot of like the the, the seals or the emblems you see in the backgrounds, the portraits you see in the backgrounds. Like they they would got a lot of references to actually these in Spain. Toyf said um, Resident Evil Four killed Resident Evil. I mean, Resident Evil was dying until Four showed up, so <laughs> you could argue that it killed Resident Evil, but you could also argue if it didn't exist resident evil would have, been, would have died a long time ago um i like resident evil 4 a lot and this is coming from a long time resident evil fan um i respect each game for what they are i don't play resident evil 4 thinking oh i wish it was more like resident evil 1 i don't play resident evil 1 thinking wishing it was more like resident evil 4 um i like resident evil um and i like resident evil 4 i played it on the podcast or on a stream a while ago and i, I was having a blast with it um, this HD project is something I've been following for a while. Um, I want to get into it, but they're kind of doing things piece by piece, so I don't want to download it until everything's done. Uh, looks like the Assignment Ada minigame was totally finished, so that's really cool. Um, so it says, let me explain. Resident Evil 4 was a commercial success, but it killed the survival horror aspect. It did, but, I mean, it's back now, so... I mean, is that, like, the worst thing in the world? The survival horror stuff is back and Resident Evil 4 is still a fun game dude. like I still love that game. even though like people argue like it killed what, what we know about Resident Evil it's still a fun game to play and I can appreciate it for that um this HD project's looking amazing like just looking at these textures it's impressive how much better they look how sharp they look and I, I can't wait to see it completely finished I'm just curious now what's going to be done first these this uh texture update or the actual Resident Evil 4 remake that Capcom's going to be working on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot they're doing that. Yeah, man. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna have to be quick about it because um, Capcom's usually pretty, um, like, okay with other people, like, working on their stuff. So I'm sure they'll, they'll be allowed to finish. But, um, yeah, it might. They might have to like bump heads a little bit. Um, Leo said this is a mod, right? Not a fan remake, so it should be safe. It should be. Um, and Capcom's pretty cool about it. Like I talked about this in the podcast before, when the RE2 remake was being made by um, Invader Studios, Capcom shut them down. But they were like, "Hey, listen, we don't want to be dicks. We're shutting you guys down because we're working on our own remake." But tell you what, come over. They invited them over to the uh, to their um, to their office, showed them some of the shit they were working on with RE2, and even gave them uh, some development tips and some tools to make their own game. And that's where Invader Studios' other game just came out, um, Daymare 1988. That was made with the skeleton of the RE2 remake they were working on using tools at Capcom. Um, so Capcom's pretty cool about it. They might let them... They might let them um, release this mod because it's not like a trying to replace Resident Evil 4. It's just a mod for it. I will have to wait and see what happens, man. Um, I'm excited for it. I'm excited for the Resident Evil 4 remake. I'm excited for the RE4 uh, visual remaster, the HD project mod. 
Um, I just love anything Resident Evil. <laughs> I can't wait for it to come out. Yeah. Um, Leo says that they actually assigned someone to work with them for Daymare. I didn't know about that. I thought they just gave them like some tools and a copy of Unity to work with. Um, next in videos, we got a trailer for Definitely Not Fried Chicken. This game looks fucking insane. <laughs> yeah. So the I, premise is 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 funny because like you look at it and you're like, oh, this is just like a it's a chicken sim game, but actually yeah. chicken the chicken sim the chicken sim is just a front for the actual business, which is <laughs> drugs. <laughs> <laughs> um it's, it's basically like it's like basically like breaking bad, like you're the Los Poyos Hermanos. Um <laughs> and you're trying to manage your front, but at the same time, uh, manage your drug empire as well. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah, dude, it's really cool. I'm really into it. Um, Leo says, God, I love fried chicken and drugs. Me too, Leo. <laughs> um, but no, this looks fucking hilarious, dude. Um, this is really funny. Um, it shows... Um, it shows like the place getting raided and like you're shooting up like what looks like FBI agents and like rival cartels. Yeah. On um, their scene of you like trading your drugs for like guns. <laughs> it's fucking crazy, dude. I'm into this. <laughs> I'm really into this. Yeah. I, I love the idea for this game so much. It's a I simulator. usually um I usually hate yeah. like management sims, but like this is such a unique spin on it that like I kind of really yeah, want to try it. Credit. Yeah, me too. I really want to try it out. Um, I can't wait to see that come out. Um, we also got a trailer for. I didn't know what this was. I got this confused in another game that that clay game, but then we got a yeah. trailer for uh, Everhood. So which this I thought game, was like, yeah, this looks crazy. It's like Undertale, but what if it was also a rhythm game? Um, which. I'm into this. I fucks with this. Yeah. And you know how much I love rhythm games, especially when they're combined with like other shit. Um, rhythm games are like perfect to combine with other things. Dude. Like, yeah, well, no one was really doing it until Crypt of the Necro Dancer. Um, and that works so well that like now they're just combining it with fucking everything. So, and this, this isn't the only like rhythm RPG. Like, we also have that, that Taiko drum game, too. <laughs> yeah. And I'm trying to. That enemy's name was Rasta Beast. <laughs> Speaking um, of Rasta, did you hear that Jamaica has a weed shortage? I, does it really? <laughs> yes, dude. It's the thing that happened. Uh, I can't remember the exact structure of it, but it started out with like the farmers uh, not having resources to grow their crops. So now there's a weed shortage in Jamaica. That's a thing. Look it up. Uh, but no, this game, Everhood, I thought it was. What's that clay game? You know what I'm talking about, right? Neverhood? Is that what it's called? I have no idea. Hold on. Clay? You yeah, mean the clay. Neverhood. No, it's, it's called? called the Neverhood. The Neverhood. Oh. That's what I thought Everhood was. I thought it was like a remake of that. But then I saw the trailer and I was like, oh, this is a, not what I was expecting. Uh, yeah, so it says uh, he wants to try chicken restaurant chain, but they didn't have drugs. That's a shame, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Not that you know of. They could, you know, you were just part of the front. <laughs> um, but no, Everhood looks cool. Um, I'm into it. I, I, that's like my word of the fucking day today. But there, there's so much shit. I'm into. I'm into all of this. Yeah, so that's coming. That's coming March fourth. Yep. Um. Uh, we also got a uh, we got some releases coming out too. Uh, February 11th, we have Death Crown coming out on Switch, PC, Xbox One. Uh, minimalist uh, strategy RPG looks interesting, but I'm not a strategy RPG fan. And it also has I think some deck building stuff to it too. Or am I making that up? I'm out. No, I'm making that up. There's no oh. deck building. Um, um, it's all strategy RPG. But I like it the looks, art it style. Looks, me too. I like the art style, but I'm I, not. I love when sure. games do this fucking like this minimalistic art, man. Like this like ASCII art. 
monochrome shit. It's one of the things. Um, I remember Return of the Obra Den. Um, had like a similar art style. It was all this like dot matrixy fucking like animated stuff. It, it just looks awesome. Yeah, I love that stuff too. The stream is um, probably freaking out looking at this. <laughs> like, this is the kind of stuff that, like, a live stream that has trouble fucking rendering. Um, so, <laughs> this probably looks like an absolute fucking mess on the stream, but. <laughs> um, if you like this, like, ASCII style, like, art style, have you heard of a World of Horror? Uh, yeah, is that the one that's. Did I play that? Oh, no, I. I'm, I think I played that. Uh, so sure. World of Horror is like, you ever heard of a uh, Junji Ito? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a Junji Ito like inspired adventure um, game, a Lovecraft Junji Ito. And it looks interesting. Um, I think you would actually like love because if you like that art style so much. Um, but no, uh, this game does look good though. It's coming out on pretty much everything Switch, PS4, Xbox One, February 11th. So go yeah. check it out. Uh, if that, that game sounds up your alley, go watch it. If you couldn't figure out the fuck what's going on in the stream, <laughs> look up a <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm going to look back at what that looked like because I'm pretty sure, like, streams have trouble when it's like, um, great, dude. <laughs> <laughs> They, they it, like streams have like they're they're compressed so like when there's so much shit changing so rapidly like that um it's just it's an absolute fucking mess so yeah. like I'm pretty sure that was just incomprehensible but um we also got a new release Little Nightmares two is coming out on PC Switch PS4 Xbox One um I'm kind of ashamed of myself uh, I've been into Little Nightmares for a long time I remember back before it was called Little Nightmares back when it was um. God, what do they call it? Shit, something about a sinking city. I can't remember, but I, I've been into that game since before it got its name changed. And I never played it. I really wish I had. I, I knew I would have loved to play it. Um, I don't remember what the fucking name was. Yeah, I never knew this game was um, as popular as it is. Yeah, the first one got a lot of attention, which is fa- funny because, like, when it first got announced, it didn't really get a lot of attention. I think, like, people thought it was being done by um, Blue Point that was doing it originally. Point. I thought Media Molecule was working on it first. And that got transferred over. I might be making this up. I think I'm writing it wrong. Uh, but Little Nightmares came out a couple years ago. It got a lot of attention. The sequel's coming out. And that's getting a lot of attention too. Um, it looks cool, man. I love the idea of the original one. Um, I wish I played it. Hunger. That's what it was called. It was called Hunger. Mm. Um, I remember hearing about it back when it was called Hunger. And I was like, this game looks dope. I want to check it out. And then I heard nothing of it for years. And then finally we got Little Nightmares. Um, I wish I'd played it. Um, I guess it's not too late. I could always go back and try it. The game's not that expensive now. Um, but the sequel looks really cool. I really like the way the sequel looks. I just like the art style of the game, too. It's just really creepy and atmospheric. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really want to check this game out. I'm excited. It's coming out again February 11th for everything. PC, Switch, Xbox One, PS4. Uh, so go check it out. That tickles your fancy. Um, we also got a new release for February 12th, Gal Gun Returns. I didn't know they're still making Gal Gun games. <laughs> well, they well, weren't for a while. They they put out the one in VR. Well, here's what's funny. I didn't know how deep the legacy of Gal Gun goes. If you watch the trailer on Steam, it opens up with Gal Gun 10th anniversary. <laughs> I yeah, had it was, no it was idea. on PS3 originally. Well, only no in idea. Japan for a while. I had no idea. Uh, these games really did get like a second life on PC. Like they were selling okay on Xbox and PS3, but once it hit that PC market, like all all the fucking weaves came out of the woodwork, and they were in love with this game. Which I, I've been told it's not a bad rail shooter, despite the subject matter. Yeah. Like, yeah. Did you play it? Have you played it? Did you like it? 
Uh, I played it. <laughs> oh shit! There's a demo. I'm gonna fucking download this demo. <laughs> yeah, I play. I played this one in the in the VR one, and there, you know, okay. Um, if you guys want to check it out, that is coming uh, February 12th on pretty much the systems that matter, PC and Switch. <laughs> yeah, All well, jokes they were like censored on everything else, so I yeah. don't think they decided to release on those. Switch, Which, if, you apparently... me, yeah, if you had told me 10 years ago, Nintendo wasn't going to censor Japanese, like, etchy games i would have called you a liar <laughs> yeah but here we are this is 2021 baby this is the new normal um also released in the same day super mario 3d world bowser's fury is dropping on the switch um i played 3d world back on the wii u i liked it a lot and this bowser's fury add-on looks fucking crazy i, I still can't quite figure out what's going on with that because the Bowser's Fury add-on looks like Mario Odyssey, the way the camera's pitched. Yeah. Like, it doesn't look like this obstacle course kind of game 3D world. It's, it's, it definitely looks like a big, like, open exploration Odyssey style. Which I'm cool with. Like, I love me some Mario Odyssey. And honestly, like, this Bowser's Fury add-on almost got me to buy 3 It might still get me to buy 3 if I'm being honest. Um, if you guys haven't played it, 3D World is fucking phenomenal. It's a really fun obstacle course style um, platformer. Every level's different. Every time I think I find a favorite level, another one shows up and tells me otherwise. And it's a lot of fun when you beat the game. There's a lot of post post con- post game content to play through. Um, a lot of fun challenges to play through. Uh, you can unlock Rosalina when you beat it. It's a lot of fun. I dumped an unhealthy amount of time when the game came out on Wii U, and I might buy it again for But, uh, yeah, that comes out February 12th. I don't know how the sales are going to do, man, with Gal Gun dropping the same day. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be tough. <laughs> uh, but, no, this looks good. I know that's, like, the word of the day now, but it looks really good. Fuck, this makes me want to boot up my Wii U and play Mario again. But that would mean turning on my Wii U, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> More like P-U. Ah, uh, <laughs> the fuckers got jokes. <laughs> well, I've, been, I've been playing uh, a little bit of Mar- uh, Zelda. Uh, uh, the You know, the one. I don't know. There's like a million Zelda. <laughs> I'm have time. Uh, Wind, w- Wind Waker. Wind Waker HD. Okay. <laughs> Wind Waker HD is good. I wish they would release it on Switch already. Yeah, well, you and everyone else. Ah, oh, Nintendo. Every time you do something awesome, you do something like stupid. I don't understand you guys. Yeah, it was the one game, not that one, but Twilight Princess HD. It was the one game I used a an amiibo on <laughs> to unlock the. Uh, you use Ganondorf for it unlocks hard mode. Oh, I remember or that, yeah. Hero mode, I guess is what they call it, where hearts don't drop. And um, uh, was that the only change? Like, there's no heart drops, basically. So it's, just, it's harder. I think no heart drops, and I think you took more damage. Or am I making yeah. that up? Yeah, maybe. Nintendo, port some more shit to the Switch. The Wii U failed. We all acknowledge that. We've already <laughs> ports 20 games over. Just port some more. 2020's hard. 2020 was a, was hard on everybody. People want to play old games again. Do it. <laughs> um. But yeah, I think that's it. That's the show, right? Yep. Yeah, that's gonna do it. Here, unless anyone else has anything else to say, speak now. Forever hold Maybe. your peace. No stupid questions. What's my favorite um, color? Babies come from. Anything you guys want to? <laughs> yeah, gamerverse.com, gamerverse.com slash Twitch, gamerverse.com slash YouTube, gamerverse.com slash podcast, gamerverse.com slash Discord. Um, 
Yeah, definitely fix your mic situation, Toy. If you can, you can jump in on this. Uh, missing yeah, TV I, controllers go. Why are you using TV controllers? I use my smartphone to control my. Wow, that's. <laughs> <laughs> that's a no. luxury that, that most of us don't have. If you have a smart TV, you can control your control with your phone. <laughs> I guarantee you most of the, you probably have a smart TV and you don't know. I don't like, I don't use my um, TV remote at all. I actually don't know where it is. All I do is have to turn it My PC controls everything on my TV, so um, I never have to change I, the input. Uh, this like Logitech Harmony remote, because there's, there's a point in time where I have like a sound system and I got sick of swapping yeah, the remote. Yeah, that, though, that sucks. I don't ever want to go back to that. I don't have that sound system anymore, but my TV sounds like shit. So I buy sound for that. Uh, but right, I have this harmony yeah. for everything. It's a pretty big fucking remote. It's hard to lose. I found I found a way to just have my PC manage everything. So all I have to do is just turn this screen on, and my consoles go through that. My audio system goes through that. Um, That's cool. Everything goes through that. So. But um, yeah, I guess that's gonna do it, guys. Uh, Gamerverse.com, Gamerverse.com slash Twitch, Gamerverse.com slash YouTube, Gamerverse.com slash Discord. Jump in the Discord. We're um always chilling in there. So if you uh, <laughs> you know, thanks for visit. Talk to us. We talk back. I'm I'm gonna be streaming uh Persona. I love Persona. So um, um, I might hit you up in the stream. Uh, found out a uh, white. Um, signed us up for dinner with some uh, with another married couple. I say nice. that, but no, it's actually, it's really cool. Like they're, they're they're a cool couple. We hang out with them every week, and she's making stew, so I don't have to cook today. So I'm all nice, over that. nice. <laughs> uh, so welcome, man. You're welcome. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. That's gonna do it. <laughs>